Hey, this is uh, Max Abramson, Libertarian candidate for president again. Uh, just did my video on the Dunningham-Kruger effect, and I thought it was terrific. Uh, but apparently, a few online comments suggest that it uh, wasn't very good, didn't make my point. Uh, didn't get a lot of feedback, just uh, not a whole lot of likes and uh, loves. Um, so I just want to get straight to the point. Uh, most of the other videos online are suggesting that the illusion of superiority, the, the Dunning and Dunning Kruger effect is novices unaware of the complexity of their field. People get into photography, artwork, driving, race car driving, uh, playing music. They play a few chords on the guitar. They think they're good and they don't realize they, the field is much more broad and expansive. But um, I don't, I'm not sure that, that that's a good one. A uh, good explanation and the reason is that uh, you can tell if you're strumming accurately. You can tell if you're good or not just by sound. Uh, you can tell if you know a few chords. You know you can tell that you're missing some chords. Power chords you learn later. Different fingering techniques you learn later. Hammer on. You might not know hammer on. Uh, uh, hammer off. Picking um, you know, some of the bends and some of the more complicated uh, uh, things you need to know, some of the more complex songs. Lead guitar, of course, is more complicated. And I, I think that most photographers, when they first get into it, realize uh, there's more to it than just hitting the HDR button or autofocus or auto everything. Auto is uh, wonderful because it saves you a lot of time on the learning curve. Um, it, it, of course, in my field, when I, I proposed adding classes and object orientation to the C programming language, which a lot of people have done before, uh, the the field is a lot more complicated than it sounds, and just adding a few features isn't sufficient. So some other programming experts there suggested maybe that's an example of the Dunning-Kruger effect where uh, you just, uh, you know, I didn't know as much about uh, classes and object-oriented programming, automatic constructors, destructors, copy constructors, move constructors, and so forth. Um, except, again, I had a pretty good idea of what all of those things were um, and in general, I don't think that's a, a good example. Remember, this is arrogance. This is not just merely not knowing enough about your field. Um, you know, the, there's the example, stupid people who can't even see how poorly they're performing. That They're so stupid or they're so bad. And this is the most common ex explanation that people just, um, you know, they're just horrible at everything. And they're so horrible at everything in general, that uh, they don't realize they're terrible drivers. But uh, I think you know that when you're going over the white line, I think you know that you cut off the red light that you exercised, poor judgment. You went through the yellow light, and it turned red even before you got to the intersection. Uh, you know if you've had a certain number of accidents. So there's feedback there. Uh, there's no way that you can be so stupid that you don't know that you've gone over that white line. I think that people who are just bad drivers, in my experience, know that they're bad drivers and they're not just making one or two mistakes. They know that they're making multiple mistakes per trip. So it's the feedback that you see. So my response was um, that areas where people think that they're really good at something, but they're actually terrible at it, or they think that they're excellent, but they're mediocre, or they're below average. They think they're A, but they're actually at the B or C level or D or F. It, it, it doesn't matter. They, they can't get a good metric. Um, there's no number. There's not an A or B grade. There's not an objective member uh, uh, metric like uh, in, in basketball or soccer. You know how many points you scored in a game. You know how many games you've won. You see the video. You see where you screwed up. You see where you thought you could kick the ball further than you could, and you just end up basically slowly handling it, handing it with a, a punt to the other side's goal. You made so many attempts, but the attempts were so bad. You know, you see how many times you went so far off, so beyond the, the goal post. You really shouldn't be. Uh, there are some players, I play soccer, indoor and outdoor, and some players shouldn't try to make a goal shot at all. They should just pass to other players because they just can't make the long shots. You, but you can measure that objectively. There's feedback there. Uh, another uh, offer is most simply assume that they're good at something and never bother to check. And I think that that's the most common. People assume that they're good at something because they think that they should be. 
and in general it was admitted um, by people kind of on all sides of the, the Dunning and Kruger debate that most people generally believe that they're better than they are or to put it more accurately their estimation of how good they are in general is how good they are or are likely to be on a really good day uh, where they've stretched out they have a lot of energy they don't have anything bogging them down they don't have a lot of fast food and junk food in their system when they go out on the field um, they get a lot of lucky shots when they're taking pictures or throwing the basketball. Um, that, that people's estimation of themselves is how they should be when everything is going right. Um, but there's something, there's one more thing that I think is particularly um, hard to describe, and it's kind of the hero syndrome. The people who are absolutely the worst think that if there's ever a self-defense case, a break-in. I had a self-defense case in my own uh, past. Uh, uh, a lot of people were almost killed or hurt very badly, and it was only because I had a gun, I think, that I was able not only to, sur to survive, but prevent other people from getting hurt or killed. Um, but people think that in a, in a, a self-defense case, in a survival case, stuck out in the woods, attacked by a wild animal, they actually seem to think, most of our legislators, Republicans and Democrats, seem to think that the bear attacks you, or the burglar attacks you, or someone comes at you with the upturned knife, and they think that they can grab the remote control and just hit the stop button, and just pause everything, and calmly think things through. And most people believe that, and the people who believe that have never been in a self-defense situation. Very few cops and firefighters very few combat veterans, people who, uh, and combat pilots, people who have actually been shot at, understand that when someone is really trying to hurt you, or some wild animal is really trying to kill you, that it's it's a completely different situation, it's a completely different scenario, and you learn a lot from that. I've been in a lot of life and death scenarios over over the years, and I can tell you that it's really, really hard to think clearly when the adrenaline levels are going straight up when you're out on a merchant ship and a giant wave comes over the side and you think that you're going to hit the pause button and you're going to stop time and you're going to get to think about where you're going to go and what you're going to do and the, and the truth is uh, I don't mean to toot my own horn but I know from experience that I've responded very very well to a lot of life and death emergencies because I've faced a lot of life and death emergencies and I'm lucky enough uh, to have the kind of, um, you know, it, it's not something that I boast about, but I know for a fact that I respond very quickly to life and death scenarios, and I do very well in life and death scenarios. Um, when Donald Trump gave his 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 speech press conference after the whatever shooting scenario from last year, he said that he didn't know, but he's sure that he would run in there and he. In, in, in his mind, he's sure that he would he would do a terrific job of, you know, going and getting the shooter and saving people. And he insists that he's a stable genius. Uh, having been in a lot of life and death scenarios, I can tell that he is someone who has not been in a lot of life and death scenarios. I'm not saying that he's a terrible president or the worst president we've ever had, but I, I meet people like this all the time who've never had a knife at their throat who've never uh, come close to death where they have to think very, very quickly and come up with an answer. And my explanation, having been through it so many times, is uh, you're either lucky enough that, you know, the right answer comes to mind when the adrenaline is running, or you're not, and it's not about how good you are, it's about how lucky you are. I lucked out when I happened to have one of those brains where the adrenaline kicks in and... You know, the, the, the path out of there just immediately appears in front of my eyes. Think of it immediately, and I get out of the scenario. I prevent other people from getting hurt or killed, and it doesn't matter if it's a terrible ship storm that we're going into or, or something else. So um, Dunning-Kruger effect, in my opinion, in summary, I'm going to say that it's due to a either a lack of, of objective, measurable feedback, or it's uh, for that particular subject, uh, the area that people think that they're really good at, 
or it's due to the fact that that person has just never been in a situation where they, um, with that particular field, that particular scenario, that particular profession, um, that particular trade, they've never been in a situation where they've gotten feedback showing, hey, they don't know what they're doing, hey, they don't know how to deal with an emergency, um, and we have lots and lots of emergency responders who um, get into it, faced with a life and death scenario, and they, you know, the first time they, they're hit with it, it's two, three, four, or five years into the job, and they realize that they're just not the person who can handle that, and they shouldn't feel compelled to stay in that profession just to go for their their pension. They, sh they should be able to switch out to a different profession because most people, in my experience, just can't handle life and death scenarios uh, 